companies with losses running into many billions of rand as workers push for higher wages. So what now for as, as illegal strikers appear to be digging in their heels? Uh, well, for one perspective, I'm now joined by the CEO of the Chamber of Mines, uh, Becky Sibia. Thank you very much for joining us on the program. Welcome to Good morning, and thank you very much for inviting me. All right, it's a difficult period for the uh, mining industry in general, but wh why did the talks collapse yesterday? Uh, firstly, we regret very seriously that the talks uh, did collapse yesterday because uh, for us, as we were pursuing the agreement which had been concluded in tw tw 2011, in terms of the implementation, we're thinking we're making significant progress. I would think probably uh, two reasons were responsible. One, the union leadership did not have sufficient amount of time to engage with as many of the striking workers as possible mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons, among others, that uh, the strike disrupts the normal channels of communication. Secondly, is because this issue of 12,500 rand has been ingrained mm -hmm. in the psyche of so many, and therefore anything short of 12,500 is seen as a failure, mm -hmm. and therefore they are persisting. Possibly they may think that uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel and the employers are about to collapse and yield. Unfortunately, the That's latter not is not true. Well, let's take a look and see what the uh, NUM General Secretary Franz Bellini had to say uh, yesterday. We were extremely uh, concerned about the approach of the chamber. We left uh, the meeting with the understanding that they will make an improved offer. Um, now they have some assaulted. They are saying first things must be normalized and uh, people must report for duty. They will only then consider to make an improved offer. So did you go back on a promise that you made to them? There is no going back on mm. any promise. When they left later last week, they had an offer. And here is the, the entry level, which again was part of the 2011 agreement. And for us, we said, here is an offer which has the domino effect on other grades. And so there was no going back at all. And for them, I think they are stuck, as I indicate, so, on the 12,500 So what will happen now? Is it likely that mining houses, in dealing with this issue alone, are probably going to dismiss some workers? Well, let's deal with it. Mm. It's unprotected and illegal strikes. And therefore by them not going back to mm. work, they are legible for dismissals as it has happened in other mining companies. And I think really that's what is going to happen. Mm. But secondly, I think the parties are going to respectively review their conditions and their neck bargaining strength, mm. as it were. Because for them, they may have rejected it tactically, thinking there is something, mm. they don't want to leave anything on the table. And the management is saying, if we want to maintain running the companies as we do, there are, mm. there are levels where we say, we cannot go beyond mm. this one. And therefore, the strike can take as long as it, it, it takes. However, mm. the pay levels are not sustainable. All right, so some strikers are representing themselves, and this is a new phenomenon. Is this making negotiations and managing this process uh, uh, more problematic? It makes it extremely difficult. Mm. I think really, whereas the loan mean settlement was appreciated because of the Maricana disaster as it were, unfortunately it set a bad precedent where mm. You one can negotiate outside the bargaining structures, outside the recognized unions, and therefore people are thinking they're, they're going to do that. And it's mm -hmm. therefore making the negotiations extremely difficult. All right. So um, I get a sense that, uh, you know, forever in a day we're going to be looking uh, before Marikana and post Marikana. Has the mining industry changed now uh, forever? Well, it has changed forever mm. in uh, the bargaining uh, issues. It has changed in terms of the representation of the unions. But I think as well there are some changes which are going to need to happen in the mining industry. The unfortunate one is that there are going to be retrenchments. Mm. That one we need to accept that is going to happen. But I think in terms of social and living conditions, they are unacceptable. And my view is the partnership between the government and the mining houses is going to have to improve. And there are overtures mm. by the government that they are wanting to ensure that we improve the living conditions of the workers so that uh, we, as it were, prevent this from recurring. All right, Mr. Sabir, we're going to have to leave it there, but lots of work still on the cards, it would seem. Thanks for your time.
Thanks, Peter. All right.